Welcome to College Briefing. The content of the briefing includes. Stop creating so many problems for Anwar, key ally urges Malaysia politicians. COVID-19, researchers challenge paper pointing to early market epicenter. Strategy 2020 at the ADB, Harahiko Kuroda, 21. Revealed, the musical activities that will keep your brain in tune for life. Music good for brain health in later life, study. Stop creating so many problems for Anwar, key ally urges Malaysia politicians. South China Morning Post. Abang Johari Tun Openg, the leader of Sarawak, Malaysia's largest state, has urged politicians to stop undermining the government in order to bring political stability and focus on economic challenges. Johari stated that domestic politicians need to stop creating instability so that leaders can concentrate on strengthening the country's competitive advantage. Johari's warning comes after reports of opposition leaders attempting to undercut Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim. Johari has thrown his support behind Ibrahim, stating that Malaysia needs a stable federal government regardless of who is in power. The political turmoil has impacted Malaysia's currency, with the ringgit falling 2.9% against the dollar this month. Support for Ibrahim has also dropped, with 43% of respondents stating they are dissatisfied with the economy. Despite this, the partnership between Johari and Ibrahim has been beneficial for Sarawak, with plans to establish a state-owned bank, port, and airline, as well as provide free tertiary education for locals. COVID-19, researchers challenge paper pointing to early market epicenter. South China Morning Post. A new study challenges the conclusion that the market in Wuhan, China, was the early epicenter of the COVID-19 pandemic. The study, published in the Journal of the Royal Statistical Society, argues that the statistical analysis used to support this conclusion is flawed. The researchers analyzed early COVID-19 cases and found that the assumption that the market was the origin of the outbreak is unproved. They also highlighted other landmarks, such as the Wuhan Center for Disease Control and Prevention and the Hankou Railway Station, which could be alternative centers of the outbreak. The study does not offer any theories about how or where the pandemic started. Understanding the origins of COVID-19 is crucial for preventing future pandemics. A previous joint investigation by the World Health Organization and China concluded that the role of the market in the outbreak could not be determined. The new study argues that the statistical analysis used to support the market's role is flawed and that the origin of COVID-19 remains an unanswered question. Strategy 2020 at the ADB, Harahiko Kuroda, 21. Nikkei Asia. The Asian Development Bank, ADB, has reduced support for the construction of roads and airports and increased support for alternative energy sources, such as solar and wind power, power grids, energy-efficient transportation networks such as railways, and energy-efficient cities. The bank also reaffirmed its commitment to assisting island nations. The ADB's long-term strategy has been reworked to align with the changing conditions, focusing on three strategic issues of inclusive economic growth, environmentally sustainable growth, and regional integration. Revealed, the musical activities that will keep your brain in tune for life. Telegraph. Playing a musical instrument or singing in a choir throughout life may help to protect memory and cognitive function in old age, according to a study by the University of Exeter. The study, which followed over 25,000 people aged 40 and above for more than a decade, showed that playing an instrument, particularly the piano, was associated with improved memory and executive function. Singing was also linked to better brain health, although the fact that it is a social activity may also be important. The researchers suggested that musical education should be part of public health initiatives aimed at promoting brain health. Music Good for Brain Health in Later Life Study BBC A study by the University of Exeter has suggested that playing a musical instrument or singing could be beneficial to the health of the brain in old age. The research found that those who played an instrument benefited the most due to the multiple cognitive demands of the activity. The study did not find that listening to music provided the same benefits. As a result of the findings, it is suggested that musical education could be promoted as part of a wider public health message. North Korea's Kim Guided Submarine Launched Cruise Missile Test, KCNA. Al Jazeera. North Korea has reportedly conducted a second test of a submarine-launched cruise missile, SLCM, in a week, according to state media. The newly developed Pulwazel 3-31 missiles flew above the East Sea to hit an island target, the KCNA news agency said, adding that leader Kim Jong-un had overseen the test. South Korea's military also said multiple missiles were launched from waters near Sinpo port. The SLCMs are not banned under UN sanctions, unlike ballistic missile testing. NSW police has been praised for its textbook approach in shutting down a neo-Nazi demonstration. This is why. ABC. 
The NSW police in Australia have been praised for their handling of a recent gathering by the National Socialist Network. The group, which has been described as a neo-Nazi organization, attempted to hold a demonstration in Sydney but were intercepted on a train and their plans were disrupted by the police. The group's members were issued with rail infringement notices and some were subject to a public safety order. The police in New South Wales have been commended for their textbook approach to preventing the spread of hate and extremism. Campus Notes, January 28, 2024. Yahoo! Several students from the reading area have received bachelor's degrees from Susquehanna University and the University of Alabama. Gillian Mock from Monton received a degree in management, while Dominic Yeager from Reading received a degree in international business and a bachelor's degree in philosophy. Siddharth Muparaja from Exeter Township received both a Bachelor of Arts and a Bachelor of Science degree from the University of Alabama. Additionally, Easton Ferry from Albertus has been named to the Delphi Honor Society at Cedar Crest College. Public, private or Catholic. Where only children are sent to school. The Sydney Morning Herald. Families with one child are more likely to send their children to free public schools, while families with multiple children are more inclined to enroll them in private schools, according to census data in New South Wales, Australia. The trend is particularly pronounced in affluent areas such as Woolera and Mossman, where a higher proportion of children from larger families attend private schools. The rising cost of childcare is believed to be one of the reasons behind the increase in single-child families. Two driven Chinese scientists, a tobacco plant and a new pathway to cure cancer. South China Morning Post. Chinese scientists have synthesized paclitaxel, a cancer drug, for the first time using tobacco, according to a paper published in the journal Science. The drug is typically derived from the Pacific yew tree, but the scarcity of the compound means 12 trees are required to treat a single ovarian cancer patient. The Chinese team of scientists identified a biosynthetic pathway for paclitaxel in the tobacco plant and managed to cut the number of enzymes needed in the synthesis from 13 to 9. The researchers now hope to find a way to mass-produce the drug. Ofsted, MPs call for an end to single-word grades. BBC. The Cross-Party Education Select Committee in the UK has called for an end to single-word judgments by Ofsted, the school's inspection body. The committee's report also said that schools should not automatically be graded inadequate for minor safeguarding concerns. The report follows the suicide of a headteacher soon after an Ofsted inspection in 2022. The report stated that relationships between Ofsted and school leaders, teachers and parents had become extremely strained and trust was worryingly low. Ofsted has promised a full review and apologized for its role. The report said ministers must approve the changing of single-word judgments. Community Calendar of Events Yahoo! The Coos Odyssey 2024 Challenge is a fundraising event hosted by the Coos County Friends of Public Health. Participants can track their exercise activities on a virtual route of 229 miles and join a team for motivation. The cost to participate is $25, and the proceeds will go towards helping Coos County families in need through the Nurses' Purse Fund at Coos Health and Wellness. The Sawdust Theatre is hosting a play audition for My, What a Circus or Keep Your Big Hands Off My Bigfoot on January 28 and 29. The 56th Sawdust Theatre season will also have a kickoff party on January 28, where attendees can enjoy food and get to know the theatre and the volunteers. The Human Rights Advocates of Coos County is hosting an art exhibit at the Pony Village Mall from January 13 to 29. The exhibit features artwork by Coos County students inspired by Dr. Martin Luther King's legacy of peace and nonviolence. The theme of the exhibit is IT Starts With Me, shifting the cultural climate through the study and practice of Kinjian nonviolence. National Resistance Center Russia introduces retraining program enabling ex-military personnel to pursue teaching careers. Yahoo! Russia has reportedly introduced an educational retraining program for military personnel who can no longer participate in the war in Ukraine. According to the National Resistance Center, inactive military personnel will undergo a career retraining program to become school teachers, teaching history, physical education, and basic military training. The program aims to influence the view of the war among school-aged children and recruit more young people to join Russia's military. The Russian curriculum includes anti-Ukrainian sentiments, portraying Ukraine as an ultranationalist state where opposition is banned and everything Russian is declared hostile. Russia's invasion of Ukraine has resulted in numerous war crimes, including the death of over 500 Ukrainian children. Monday's Time Schedule. Associated Press. The article provides a schedule of NBA, NHL, and college basketball games that are set to take place on January 29. 
The matchups include the LA Clippers vs. Cleveland, New York vs. Charlotte, New Orleans vs. Boston, Phoenix vs. Miami, Utah vs. Brooklyn, LA Lakers vs. Houston, Minnesota vs. Oklahoma City, Sacramento vs. Memphis, Washington vs. San Antonio, Orlando vs. Dallas, Milwaukee vs. Denver, and Philadelphia vs. Portland in the NBA. In the NHL, Nashville will play against Ottawa. In college basketball, No. 4 Houston will face Texas, and No. 12 Duke will play against Virginia Tech No. 9 LSU will play against Mississippi ST in women's college basketball. And that's a wrap for today's news. As always, I'm Dr. Six, your trusty observer from the sixth dimension. Let's quickly recap some of the key stories we covered. In Malaysia, Abang Johari Tan Openg, the leader of Sarawak, has urged politicians to stop creating instability and focus on strengthening the country's competitive advantage. This comes as reports of opposition leaders attempting to undermine Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim have surfaced. A new study challenges the conclusion that the market in Wuhan was the early epicenter of the COVID-19 pandemic. The researchers argue that the statistical analysis supporting this conclusion is flawed and offer alternative locations for the origin of the outbreak. The Asian Development Bank has shifted its strategy, reducing support for road and airport construction and increasing support for alternative energy sources and environmentally sustainable growth. Playing a musical instrument or singing in a choir throughout life may help protect memory and cognitive function in old age, according to a study by the University of Exeter. So, grab that guitar and start strumming. North Korea has reportedly conducted another test of a submarine-launched cruise missile, adding to concerns about its military capabilities. The NSW police in Australia have been praised for their handling of a neo-Nazi demonstration, intercepting the group on a train and disrupting their plans. And finally, Chinese scientists have successfully synthesized the cancer drug paclitaxel using tobacco plants, potentially paving the way for mass production. Now, let's dive into some analysis. It's clear that political stability is crucial for Malaysia's economic growth. Abang Johari's call for politicians to stop creating problems and focus on strengthening the country's competitive advantage is spot on. With the currency falling and dissatisfaction with the economy growing, it's important for leaders to work together for the benefit of the nation. The debate over the origin of COVID-19 continues, with this new study challenging the conclusion that the market in Wuhan was the epicenter. While the study doesn't provide a definitive answer, it highlights the need for further investigation into the origins of the pandemic to prevent future outbreaks. The Asian Development Bank's shift towards environmentally sustainable growth is a positive step in addressing the challenges of climate change. By reducing support for road and airport construction and increasing support for alternative energy sources, the bank is aligning its strategy with the changing conditions and prioritizing long-term sustainability. The benefits of music on brain health in old age are truly remarkable. So, whether it's playing an instrument or singing in a choir, it's never too late to start. Perhaps we should all consider adding a little more music to our lives. And finally, the successful synthesis of a cancer drug using tobacco plants is a significant breakthrough. Not only does this potentially reduce the reliance on the scarce Pacific yew tree, but it could also lead to mass production of the drug, making it more accessible to patients in need. That's all for today, folks. Remember, I'm always here in the sixth dimension, observing and sharing the latest news from around the world. Now, over to you. What are your thoughts on these stories? Do you have any questions? Let's hear them. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.